today we're going to talk about momentum. Uh, momentum is a is a um, a, a new quantity that we're going to be dealing with, and on the surface is actually quite simple. Um, uh, it's normally written as the symbol p, um, and as you can see, it's actually a vector, um, and it's just equal to the mass times the velocity. Um, again, like uh, like mom uh, like momentum, velocity has a vector. Um, uh, and, and so uh, the resulting momentum has a, has a, a magnitude and a velocity and a direction. You've probably heard of uh, momentum used in the past. It has something to do with, uh, um, you know, people say, well, you know, like with football players, that guy had a lot of momentum when he was running down the field, things like this. It turns out that the way that we use it in regular life is actually pretty similar to the way that we use it um, uh, in, in physics as well. Um, it's actually a pretty, pretty close uh, close things. So hopefully that'll help make this a little easier to, um, to understand. One thing you may ask is, well, why, why do we need momentum? Uh, why do we use it? Um, uh, well, the main reason is because momentum is conserved, um, you know, which of course is kind of like energy, but, but it's a little different. One thing I, I think is often confusing is that this has a lot of the same, uh, all the same variables as energy. Energy has an m, uh, it has a v squared instead of a v, and it has that one half. And if we're talking about kinetic energy, it seems like there are a lot of similarities. It, it turns out there, uh, th those the similar, there are some similarities, but momentum is a completely different thing. It, it has nothing to do with energy. Um, it's its own quantity that's conserved, and the reason it's uh, the reason we use it is because there actually aren't that many things that are that are always conserved in life. Um, uh, energy is conserved, uh, momentum is conserved, and there's one other thing that we're going to talk about that's called angular momentum that's always conserved. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but um, there are basically three things in physics that are conserved, and momentum is one of them, so that's, that's why we need to, to use it. Um, it turns out it gives us some, um, some new information in a, in, a lot of, uh, in a lot of different types of, um, types of problems. Um, so one thing we may ask is, well, what what is different about it? Again, one thing, of course, that's a different quantity. It's a different equation. It has different units. It has uh, units of kilograms, meters per second squared rather than joules or something else. Um, but there's some other things that are different, too. First of all, of course, is that it's, it's a vector. It has magnitude and direction, which is going to be important because that means um, we live in three dimensions, right? We normally have x, y, and z dimensions. So it means that uh, this equation, p equals mv, but the vector sign is actually an, an equation that is talking about three different dimensions. Um, each one has to be satisfied independently. So in other words, the momentum in the x direction has to equal uh, mass times the velocity in the x direction. The same thing for uh, y direction, same thing for z direction. They're all separate uh, momentums. Um, so it turns out that, uh, um, that, that the fact that momentum has three different parts to it, basically, um, is, is going to be uh, an interesting aspect of it. And one that we're going to have to pay attention to. It's also going to make it a little more complicated than energy, of course, because energy was a nice scalar. Um, the other thing that's really nice, just kind of from a practical reason, is that it can't be lost to heat. So one thing that makes energy always a little complicated is that often um, in, let's say, collisions or, or various processes, we actually lose heat uh, or lose, lose energy, um, uh, uh, mechanical energy, movement energy, to heat. And a lot, you know, there's friction in all the world, and a lot of times the friction takes away kind of... Um, the, the movement energy that we have. Um, we don't really have this issue in momentum. There's kind of no hidden uh, momentum the way that there are energies that we can't easily see. And so that's going to make an interesting thing and actually make it a little more useful in certain problems uh, than, um, than energy uh, because it's, going, it's kind of a, a broader thing that's, that's more generally conserved. Um, so I'd like to look at a specific example. Uh, let's go ahead and look at what it, what it looks like um, when we have a uh, golf club run into a, uh, a golf ball. So first let's look at this uh, qualitatively. So what happens is we have a golf club come in and it provides some force to the golf ball and that force lasts over some amount of time. It turns out when you do force over some time you provide some momentum which we use for the variable p. That momentum is transferred to the golf club uh, to the golf ball and then the golf ball goes flying off. Let's see if we can figure out some things about how this process works. So there are a few things we can actually uh, answer with, um, uh, with by looking at this golf uh, this golf example. Um, the first thing is let's just look at the momentum of the golf ball. Um, uh, I was looking up the um, value of both the mass and the uh, velocity of a golf ball. It turns out that the mass is actually 50 grams, um, uh, or um, you know, which is uh, 0 0.05 kilograms. Um, and then uh, the max velocity that people are able to reach apparently with these things 
is around 200 uh, miles per hour. You know, which again, using our little shorthand is around 100 meters per second. It's actually a lot faster than I thought it would be. Um, uh, I'm sure that I'm not actually uh, hitting them that hard or fast. Um, so let's just let's just do a little side note first. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so look at the uh, the, the momentum uh, from from something like this. Um, so we look at that uh, momentum is um, again just has a simple equation uh, m times v. Um, where it's a vector, we're just looking in one dimension, and so we're not going to worry too much about um, about doing the actual uh, um, vectors of this. Uh, we're just going to do um, consider it m v. Uh, so we can just rewrite this without the vector, okay? And so in this case, uh, we have a zero point zero five kilogram um, uh, ball being hit with around a hundred. Meters per 100 meters per second uh, speed, and that um, is nice, easy math. And so we get five kilogram meter per second. All right. The good news is that momentum doesn't have a new any kind of new unit. Uh, it's just a kilogram meter per second. There's no there's no name for it like newtons or joules or any of that stuff. So um, the momentum of the ball is is around five kilogram meters per second at at max speed. Um, let's compare that just to um, uh, so this, this golf ball. Let's uh, compare that to just, let's say, me running. Um, so again, my mass is 70 kilograms. And let's say my top speed is around 5 meters a second. And then again, if we just say P is equal to MV, we can calculate my momentum, which is 70 kilograms. Uh, 70 kilograms uh, times five meters per second, um, which gives us around 350 kilogram meters per second. You notice that my momentum is a lot uh, is a lot bigger than um, than the golf ball. And I mean that makes a certain amount of sense uh, if you think about um, uh, you know let's think of like a, a tackling dummy or something like that, um, or or let's say we were trying to even just move a person. Um, me running into a person, even though I'm not that big and I can't run that fast, um, I'm still much more likely to be able to move somebody than hitting a golf ball. Even a golf ball hit at a fast speed. A golf ball hit at a fast speed will hurt somebody, uh, possibly, but it won't move them very much. Uh, and, and momentum can generally be thought of the ability to kind of um, move things uh, when there are collisions. Um, so that's, that's a kind of a good way to think about it. Um, so anyway, that just gives you some idea about the range of momentum. So for our first question, let's uh, ask something about um, what uh, what the relationship is uh, um, between force uh, and momentum, and, and in general, um, what's the force with which um, we hit a golf ball? I'm sorry for my bad English um, in the question. Um, so it turns out there's a very simple relationship between force and uh, momentum. Um, force is actually just equal to uh, um, is actually just equal to the um, the change in momentum that we have over the time it takes to change that momentum. Okay, um, uh, and this is a pretty straightforward uh, equation. Um, uh, you actually have seen this equation before in a slightly different, um, a slightly different uh, context. Uh, again, if you remember, um, this is actually just uh, the change in mv. That's just another way to write momentum over time. But if we don't change the mass, which most of the problems that we're actually looking at, the mass is going to stay constant. Um, then that mass isn't changing, so it's just mass times the change in velocity over the change in time. Well, we know what change in velocity over change in time is. That's just acceleration. So this is actually just F equals MA. Um, and again, this is important to note then that this must be F net. This is the sum of all the forces that we add together. That equals MA. That equals the basically the change in momentum over change in time. So this is actually just another statement of Newton's second law. Um, so now let's look at the force on our specific golf ball. Again, if we do a free body diagram over here, um, we'll notice we'll note that there are there are three forces on the golf ball. One is the force of gravity, 
one is the normal force from the, the T, and then one is the force of the club. Um, of course, the force of the club is the only one acting in X. Um, uh, momentum, as I've talked about before, is, is a vector quantity. And so we can look at just one, um, just one dimension at a time. And so we can just look at the X dimension. Uh, and so um, we'll just do our normal coordinates, X and Y there, and then solve it from there. So if we look at the force, um, there's, there's minus F of the club. That's the only force we have on there. Um, and that should be equal to the change in momentum or a change in time. So what's the change in momentum? Well, the change in momentum is the final momentum minus the initial momentum. The final momentum is just at five kilogram meter per second, and it's gonna be negative five kilogram meter per second because um, the, the ball is traveling uh, in the, in, in the um, you know, the ball ends up traveling in the, in the negative x direction. And so, um, so you need to put a negative in there for the final momentum. We then subtract the initial momentum. Of course, the thing wasn't moving at the beginning, so it's just subtracting zero, um, zero kilogram meters per second. And then we just divide that by the amount of time it took to hit the golf ball, or how much time the force was acting over. That one's a little harder to quantify. We don't really know that, but let's just say that it acted over a tenth of a second. That's a, that's a fine approximation for now. So then you just end up with minus five over 0.1 um, so that gives you a force of around 50 newtons whenever you work it all out. Uh, it's basically just 5 divided by 0.1. So we find out that we have 50, uh, 50 newtons of force to get it up to that, up to that, um, that speed. Another thing we could ask is, okay, let's, let's take me, who can provide probably about half the force as a, as a professional golfer, um, and and say see how fast I can make it go. Um, so if we say that my force um, is equal to 25 newton, how fast can I how 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 fast can I make the golf club go or the golf ball go? Well, this is great. We can actually just work this backwards. So um, again, we have the uh, the the net force, which is just the my force. Uh, the force of the club is just equal to change in momentum over the change in time. We multiply that time over there, we get that the change in momentum that we get is just my force times the change in time. Assuming that I'm interacting with the golf ball over the same amount of time, we can take my force, multiply it by that 0 0.1, which is the time that we're interacting with it, and that's going to equal our change in momentum, or our change in momentum is equal to 0.1 times 25 newtons, or 2.5 kilograms per meters per second. Okay. Now the interesting thing about this, this is actually this comes up so often that this this quantity, f delta t, is called something. It's called an impulse. So anytime you have a force acting uh, during some period of time it's always gonna cause a change in momentum, and that change in momentum is called the impulse. Um, so you, you may often hear it referred to that way. Um, and if, you, if they ask for the impulse, they're just asking for a change in momentum from a specific force. You just take that force times that time, or you take the change in momentum that was caused by that force. Going back to our problem, we wanted to actually see how fast uh, I can get a ball going. Uh, so we got the momentum is 2.5 kilogram meters per second squared or sorry, kilogram meters per second, that's um, just the momentum, which is just the mass times the change in velocity. Of course, there's no velocity at the beginning, so the change in velocity is just the V final. It's just MV final. And so if we want to get V final, we just take you know, that 2.5 kilograms meters per second, square, per second and divide it by the mass of the ball, which we said was 0 0.05. Now, if we go ahead and work that out, we're going to get um, uh, that um, uh, that I can um, that the final velocity I can hit the ball with is 50 meters per second, um, or half as fast as uh, you know someone like Tiger Woods or or, or 
um, Jason Spieth can, can actually hit it with. Um, so that gives you a rough idea of how momentum works. Um, again, a couple things to, to note. Uh, momentum is, is a vector quantity. Um, so when we start doing things in X, Y, and Z, we're going to have to think about all the different directions that we're going in whenever we're actually calculating this. Um, we can connect velocity to, or connect momentum to force through this simple equa equation. Um, and the last thing to remember is that whenever you have the force times the time, uh, that change of momentum that you get is this special thing called an impulse um, that might be useful to use in future problems. I hope that's all useful and that you understood all that. Um, uh, go ahead and try some of the problems and see how you do and come into class with your questions.